Associate Professor of Entomology, Bob Lewis, teaches graduate courses and is conducting systematic studies of fleas and other ectoparasitic arthropods and their hosts. Bob is a member of the Departmental Committee establishing operations policy for use of Iowa State's new scanning electron microscope. We at Iowa State University have been fortunate to recently acquire a JOCO JSMS-1 scanning electron microscope. Scanning electron microscopy is still in its infancy, but it permits the investigator to examine the surface structures, the surface topography of small animals, especially insects, in uh, a three-dimensional way, which has not been possible before. We hope that this machine will uh, be useful in improving our research programs here at ISU and also serve as a helpful uh, aid in our teaching programs. Let me show you how it works. This vacuum evaporator is used in specimen preparation. While even living insects may be studied with the scanning scope, better results are obtained when specimens are coated with a conductive material prior to examination. Specimens are placed in the bell jar, the machine is pumped down to a high vacuum, and a gold palladium alloy is condensed on their surfaces. Before this can be done, the material must be mounted on specimen stubs using Duco cement, silver paint, or double-sided sticky tape. Here you see a number of fleas mounted on a stub ready for study. The stub is then placed in the specimen chamber, the chamber closed, and the column pumped down. Four control knobs outside the specimen chamber control the orientation of the stub on X and Y axes, rotation 360 degrees, and inclination from minus 5 to plus 45 degrees. Focusing the image requires at least partial darkness for detail to show up on the cathode ray tube. Initial focus is obtained by use of the focus knob, but additional detail and clarity is obtained by balancing the image brightness and contrast. The simplified console of the JSM S1 contains only a few more controls and a color television set, and greatly reduces the time required to train inexperienced persons to operate the machine. When the proper focus is obtained, a single slow scan registers the image on Polaroid PN55 film. In 20 seconds, the film is developed and the operator is provided with a positive picture as well as a negative from which additional prints can be made by conventional photographic techniques. Wilbur Bud Guthrie is an associate professor of entomology at Iowa State and full-time researcher at the USDA's European Corn Borer Research Lab in Ankeny. Since 1964, Bud has been leader of the Ankeny Lab's successful research in the area of host plant resistance to the European corn borer. We are artificially infesting corn plants today to simulate a first root infestation in the field. We have two problems in host plant resistance research. One, to breed for resistance to the first brood, and two, to breed for resistance to the second brood. Now, unfortunately, inbred lines of corn resistant to the first brood are not necessarily resistant to the second brood. We now know a great deal about the genetics of first brood resistance and breeding procedures for transferring this type of resistance to susceptible material. We have several inbred lines with a high level of resistance, or at least with an intermediate level of resistance, that are being used in hybrid combinations. We have always had a good source of laws for egg production in our first brood work, but not in our second brood research. We can now rear the larvae on a meritic diet, and this new technique has allowed us to increase our research on the second brood. During the past three years, we have determined the type of gene action involved in second brood resistance, and during the next several years, we will determine breeding procedures for selecting for both first and second brood resistance in the same plant population. Harold Tiny Gunderson, standing six feet six, Tiny Gunderson has been Mr. Extension Entomologist to Iowa farmers, businessmen, and homemakers for more than 30 years. Born in Butte, Montana, Tiny received his PhD in entomology at Iowa State in 1939 and has since that time driven literally thousands of miles every year carrying the word throughout Iowa. Extension workers 
do their educating mostly away from the campus. And as an extension entomologist at Iowa State University, I spend about 150 days a year away from the campus conducting educational meetings, uh, setting up and evaluating result demonstrations, and in the growing season, of course, keeping track of insect activities. We need to do all of these things because we have an interested and educated audience. The meetings that I've had this past winter have been as good, as well attended as any I've held in the past. And uh, I think part of this is due to the uh, greater knowledge on the part of both farm people and town people, and a greater awareness of insect losses. They ask some pretty searching questions, and uh, extension entomologists have to run pretty hard just to keep up so that we have good answers for uh, our clientele.